Today, you are going to discuss design features and working principle of a draw frame. So, if we see the draw frame, we can see that the machine consists of basically four sections and these four sections are one is the creel, the other one is the drafting unit, the third one is the wave condensation that is drafted wave condensation and the last unit is the packaging unit. So, the sections are shown in this sketch. The drafting unit consists of a set of drafting rollers. There is a mechanism to apply pneumatic load or maybe spring load sometimes and there is a suction unit also all combined together will be called as drafting unit. The machine is actually very simple machine from the construction point of view. The creel part, the drafting unit part and the packaging unit part, these are the main parts of the machine. We are going to discuss these parts in more details gradually. First, the operating principle of the machine. So, if we see the diagram on the right hand side, we see there are feed sliver cans. In the diagram, it is shown two cans, but in a machine, there could be <coughs> actually 16 cans which are fed. Each machine will be having either one production head or two production heads. Two production heads are more common. Each head will need 6 to 8 input slivers and there will be one or single output sliver from each head. The drafting zone consists of a number of rollers. We will study about the drafting zone or draft zone in more details in some other lecture. A very simple drafting zone is shown here consisting of three pair of rollers and that means between three pairs we have two drafting zones. That is the zone between front and middle pair is called main draft zone and the zone between middle and the last pair of rollers or back pair of rollers is known as the brake drop zone. So, there are two drop zones having two different names. One is main or front drop zone, the other one is back or brake drop zone. We will learn gradually why do you call it brake drop zone. So, from the input slivers which could be let us say in a given head there could be 8 of them, these slivers are lifted from the can. The feed sliver cans are actually card cans. So, there will be suppose for, for a given head there could be 8 cans, from 8 cans 8 slivers will be lifted. These cans are placed behind the machine, slivers are lifted and there, is a, there are guide rollers which will guide the slivers towards the drafting zone. So, 8 slivers will approach the drafting zone, here this is a cross sectional view of the machine. So, 8 slivers being fed parallelly to the drafting zone will be drafted together. By drafting we mean they will be stretched and the drafted fleece which comes out from the nip of the front roller, it is in the form of a thin wave or fleece, very very flimsy, very weak. 
but this fleece which moves out from the machine is then made to converge and they are made to pass through what is known as trumpet. You have already learned about trumpet in the carding machines. So, when the wave is made to pass through the trumpet, what happens? That the wave gets consolidated and this consolidated wave gets transformed into a round shape sliver again and the output sliver is then packed in another can. So, the package in terms of can remain same, but you will see that the feed cans are much larger in size in the modern machines and delivered cans a little smaller in size. Delivered can that from the draw frames generally has a capacity 15 to 22 kilo or maximum one can go up to 25 kg of material inside the can. The delivery rate of the machine can vary and it can vary between 350 to 800 meters per minute depending upon the manufacture of the machines and the type of fiber we are going to process. The speeds can be changed anywhere in this range which suits the type of machine that we have and the quality of product that we want to produce or the type of fiber we want to process. So, this is how the machine will be working. Briefly we can say we feed between 6 to 8 slivers. All the slivers will be made to pass over a feed table and there are guiding rollers. So, these slivers will be gradually entering the drafting zone. They all will be drafted together with a draft varying between 5 to 8. The drafted slivers moves out of the drafting zone. The wave is collected, transformed into a sliver and the sliver is finally packed within a can again. This is the operating principle of the machine. From here, we go to this particular slide that is objectives of drawing. That is why do you need drawing operation? The drawing operation is being performed by the machine which is draw frame and the operation is drawing or the process is drawing. The purpose of drawing, the purposes are, lift, uh, are listed here. First, to remove entanglements between fibers present in card sliver. You already know that the card sliver consists of large number of entangled fibers. The fibers are in the form of hooks, loops and they are remain in entangled fashion. So, we have to get rid of this entanglement. The second point is that we have to straighten out and align the fibers along the sliver axis. That is another objective of drawing. So, it can achieve this to reduce the mass irregularity. The next one is to blend or mix fibers and the last one is to remove micro dust when you process cotton fiber. For synthetic fibers, the micro dust does not exist. So, these are the objectives of drawing. Removal of entanglement, straightening out and orienting the fibers along the sliver axis to remove or to reduce mass irregularity and to blend or mix fibers. The last one is to remove micro dust. Now, disentanglement or straightening actions schematically represented in this slide. See, before 
and octer. In between, we have a drafting process. You see that on the left hand side, there are fibers which are having folded ends or hooked ends. Now, when these fibers undergo the drafting operations, you see there is an improvement in terms of reduction in the extent of hooks and there is an improvement in the alignment of the fibers. So, this is how it helps in removing hooks or reducing their extent, not only hooks, the loops which are there in some fibers also get reduced. So, after drafting, we get a sliver in which the fibers are much better oriented than what they were prior to drafting operation. The other thing is disentanglement of the fibers. So, we see here that two fibers are entangled with each other. See, during the process of fiber transfer from cylinder to offer, there is a chance of fibers getting entangled with each other. These entangled fibers is of no good to us because they may lead to nef formation in future and therefore, we need to disentangle them. By the drafting process, what happens to this entanglement is shown here. You see here that there is an improvement in the entanglement. So, the process of drafting also removes entanglement from the fibers. And why they are all happening is all because of friction between the fibers due to sliding past of the fibers while they are undergoing drafting operations. Whenever there is a drafting, the fibers are moving past each other. So, there are some fibers which are moving faster, there are some fibers which are moving slower within the drafting zone. So, there is a lot of friction between the two groups of fibers and the friction leads to reduction in hooks and improvement in the orientation of fibers or alignment of fibers. So, if the friction is not there, we will not be able to achieve any improvement in terms of alignment of fibers or disentanglement of fibers. The other objective as stated earlier is reduction in mass irregularity. How DROFM can help in reducing mass irregularity? In the DROFM, in a particular head, we feed a number of slivers, not just one sliver, we feed six slivers or eight slivers. It is up to us, the number can vary between five to eight depending upon the type of the need of the industry. So, let us say we are combining eight n slivers, slivers combined as shown here is small n. Let the standard deviation of mass variation in the slivers is represented by sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 and sigma n. These are representing We know that variance has the additive property. This is the proof of this is there in any fundamental statistics book that variance can be added together. If the variance is coming from different sources which are independent of each other, then they can be added together to find out the overall total variance. So, therefore, the slivers are all individual entity coming from n different cans. Therefore, we can write the mass variation or mass variance of combined sliver is sum of 
individual variances. So, sigma c square as stated in the equations can be written, you can all add them together. And therefore, from this step we go to the next step, we can write sigma c square equal to n sigma square and therefore, sigma c is root over n sigma. This is the standard deviation of the combined sliver. Now, from here, why we are writing n? Because since sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, sigma and all these individual slivers are actually coming from the same source. That is, they are coming from the same carding machine and therefore, we can say that they are all equal to each other and therefore, all these sigma 1 sig equal to will be equal to sigma 2, sigma 2 will be equal to sigma 3, they will be all equal to sigma n or we can write they are all equal to ultimately sigma. That means, we can write here this equal to this equal to this equal to sigma and hence we can write sigma c square equal to n sigma square and therefore, sigma c equal to root over n sigma. From there, we go to the next. If m is the weight per unit length of each feed sliver, then C v of individual feed sliver is going to be as shown here. Okay. So, what will be the combined C v of mass C v of n slivers? That is also shown in this equation. C v combined will be root over n sigma by n m. N m becomes the total mass per unit length of the combined slivers. And therefore, C v is going to be sigma by n into 100 into 1 upon root n that is C v individual by root over n. So, from equation 1.6, we can see that C v combined is going to be C v of individual slivers by root over n. That means, as n that is number of doubling increases the C v percentage is going to go down. That means, if I try to combine more and more slivers, the C v of the output sliver is going to come down and down. The way C v percentage will change with n is shown in this diagram. The rate of change of C v percentage of combined feed slivers decreases with increase in number of doubling. Hence, but the rate is going to see initially the rate of decrease is very fast C v and n if it as it has been shown here that it will be very very fast, but thereafter the change will be less and less. Hence, doubling beyond 6 or 8 really does not help much in improving irregularity. So, that initially when you go from 2 slivers to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5 or 5 to 6, there will be tremendous reduction in mass irregularity, but if we go beyond that, then the reduction will be less and less. That will be that this is what is known as diminishing return. That is when we go for very large number of slivers, want to combine them, then the benefit of reduction is going to be less. On the contrary, what can happen is that when too many slivers are there, the drafting force that you require is also going to increase and there are chances that fibers may get plucked from the back roll and nape in the form of bunches without real drafting. That problem may arise. Now, statistically we have seen that the mass C v is going to reduce and physically it basically means that 
when you are combining these fibers, this doubling action is going to help in improving the mass variations. How? Now, there are thick and thin places in the individual slivers and these thick and thin places will coincide and they will compensate each other. That is, when you place a sliver against another sliver, both of them are having thick and thin places at unknown locations. So, when you combine them, statistically the thick and thin regions are going to compensate each other. It will be highly unlikely that the two thick places or two thin places will occur at the same locations. That possibility is, is much less and hence it has been found that there is always an improvement. So, drawbacks and limitations of doubling. So, doubling basically means combining the slivers. So, if doubling is increased, keeping dropped same, attenuation becomes less. Linear density of the product will increase, more number of passages will be required so as to bring the sliver to the origin to the uh, required level of linear density. Repeated passages may lead to increase in mass irregularity generated by drafting process itself. Therefore, the equalizing effect due to doubling may be less than the mass variation generated due to drafting. What does it mean that suppose if I repeat the process? again and again. That is, I take six slivers, combine them together, produce one slivers. This six slivers are again combined together, again passed to another uh, draw frame. So, instead of one passage, we go for two passages. On two passages, we can think of going for three passages, so that there is doublings are going to increase. In that case, what can happen that every drafting operation is also a source of irregular generation. We will learn about the generation of irregularity due to drafting in some other you know, lecture that every drafting operation may lead to generation of irregularity. So, on one side there is a possibility of irregularity to be generated. On the other side, because of doubling action, there is a possibility of irregularity reductions. So, both the phenomena are there and the net effect will depend who is dominating. So, when you go for too many passages, then you may find that instead of the sliver mass C B going down, it is increasing now. So, therefore, there is a limit to the doubling actions. If the linear density of the feed slivers deviate from normal linear density due to some reason, then doubling cannot compensate it. Suppose, we are feeding 6 or 8 slivers, due to some reason 2 slivers are of different count and the rest of the slivers are of another count. And if they combine them together, in that case, this count differences between slivers cannot be compensated by the doubling actions. That also you must know. So, doubling cannot compensate this. However, small short term variations in the slivers can be compensated by the doubling actions. The next important uh, objective was blending or mixing. This is achieved 
because of doubling of slivers. So, in the diagram we are showing two types of sliver black sliver and let us say white slivers. So, we have four black slivers and four white slivers placed side by side on a draw frame and we are drafting them. So, once they move out of the machine we will get thin drafted ribbons as shown in the diagram the drafted ribbons are shown there are four small circles representing drafted ribbons of the sliver consisting of black fibers and the sliver consisting of white fibers. So, when this drafted ribbon is converted into a sliver in the sliver we will have both white and black thin strips of fibers. In a way within this sliver there are four strips consisting of black fibers and another four strip consisting of white fibers. So, these white and black fibers therefore, are getting mixed together. Now, if we go to the second step that is we choose this drafted slivers consisting of black and white fibers and we take eight of them again and again go for another step of drawing operations. Now, what will happen? Each of these thin strip will be further drafted by let us say draft of 8. That means, the original black sliver will now have a mass which will be equal to 164th of what it was when it was fed on the first drawing machine. So, we will now have a sliver which will consist of 64 thin strips. Out of those 64 thin strips will be there and they will consist of black fibers, they will consist of white fibers. So, you have thin ribbons and hence we get a very good mixing of the two colors within the final sliver. So, this is how there is a possibilities of mixing of fibers having different colors. We can mix fibers coming from two different sources, one may be cotton, the other may be viscose or it could be polyester. So, many possibilities are there or even in the case of all cotton also the cotton which is coming from the same source they also can has opportunity to get mixed. Therefore, this doubling action on draw frame is mixing or blending the fibers. Next is removal of micro dust. The fibers especially cotton fibers contain lot of micro dust. The removal of micro dust is very very difficult. The macro level dust particles or impurities are removed by blow room. Some macro levels are also removed by the carding machines. Some micro dust is removed by the card also. Draw frame is the last machine in the spinning sequence where we get an opportunity to remove micro dust. Micro dust removal would first need liberation of dust particles, because there is tremendous sliding action going on between the fibers in the drafting zones. Therefore, lot of micro dust is liberated within the drafting zone and these liberated dust particles if they are not removed they will contaminate the surrounding atmosphere. Therefore, what we should do we should make use of this opportunity to remove the dust by sucking them out. 
So, the draw frame dropping unit is nowadays placed in a chamber where we maintain low pressure and by this we try to suck out the dust which are liberating from the fiber surface. So, removal of micro dust could be also another objective of draw frame, though it is not a primary objective. The primary objective is to align the fibers, to straighten out the fibers, to improve the short term integrity in the sliver and if required, if needed, we can mix or blend also fibers, but as a no, because in the case of cotton there is a chance of micro dust to get uh, liberations and hence we make use of this in terms of removing the micro dust. So, now we will discuss each of the machine components or parts with little details. The first section of the machine as was told earlier is the creel section. The creel is the place where we, we are keeping our sliver cans. These sliver cans are actually arriving from the carding machines. So, the creel has to accommodate how many cans? At least 16 cans if it is a double head draw frame. If it is single head draw frame, then we have to accommodate at least 8 cans. So, we have to place these cans, each can has a its own dimension in terms of length and diameter. So, we have to have spaces behind the machine to place these cans. And then once the cans are placed, we have to lift the sliver from the can and this sliver has to travel a distance from the can to the back roller nip of the drafting unit. So, this distance it has to travel. We have to remember that the slivers are not very strong. So, there is every possibility that while traveling from the last can to the drafting unit, there is every possibility that the sliver might get undue stretched or if the sliver is too weak, the sliver might break also, especially in the case of comb sliver, let us say, which are generally weak. Therefore, the creel has not only to accommodate the cans, also has to make sure that the slivers which are lifted from the cans are guided properly right up to the drafting unit. The creel generally has a length varying from 2 to 8 meter. It may have a smooth table with lifting and guiding rollers. Some of the modern draw frame may not have the guiding table to avoid frictional drag of slivers over the table surface. This is we have to remember that in the modern machines, since the speed has gone up, the sliver if it makes a contact with another surface, however smooth it is, there is a chance that the frictional drag can be so high that the sliver may break. Therefore, in the modern draw frames in the, in the creel, we do not see the guide table, but the rollers are there which will be lifting the sliver from the can and then it will be passed through some guiding devices right up to the uh, drafting unit. There are also stop motions to detect a missing sliver. If the sliver breaks due to some reason, then you should stop the machine. Otherwise, instead of feeding 8 slivers, we will be feeding 7 slivers 
and if we feed seven slivers and if the drafting continues for some time, then the saliva that we will produce during that time is going to be little thinner. And if the saliva is thinner, the yarn is also going to be thin over a long length. Therefore, we have to have some stop motions to detect whether a saliva exists or not. So, stop motions are also there, so that in case the saliva has broken and is missing, the signal will go and stop the draw frame, so that we do not produce a saliva where part of it is thin. In this diagram, the circle represents the can. So, placement of can in the krill, there are three types of placement that we can see in this diagram. The first one is known by 2 by 8 arrangement. So, there are two rows and in each row there are 8 cans. So, the length of the krill becomes quite large in this case, the width is less. The other one is where it is known as 4 by 4 arrangement. There are 4 rows and in each row we have 4 cans. So, this is another arrangement. So, by doing this what we see here in this case, the width has gone up but the length of the creel has gone down. So, this is could be another arrangement and the third arrangement is shown here is known as two rows T form arrangements. This arrangement is also practiced in the industry. So, these are the three different types of arrangements which are practiced and uh, all are in use in the, uh, in the industry depending upon space availability and we can choose one of those one of the th the screens. If the cans are very close to each other then sometimes if the if the cyber breaks the operator has to go and he has to mend the break. So, he should have access to the cans which are there because you never know which saliva is going to break and therefore, the operator must have access to the can quickly to mend the break so that he can go lift the saliva and put it back so that the machines can be started. So, if we have very compact type of arrangement in that case the operator takes more time to reach the particular can where the saliva has broken. So, he spends more time there. Therefore, to avoid that we can have an arrangement where there are access. The cans, the saliva cans which you see in the machines on the draw frame we have cans of two types. One is the feed can. These feed cans are coming from the carding machine and we have delivered cans which are a product of the draw frame itself. Both the cans are filled with saliva, but you have to remember that generally in the industry there are two passages which is given to the saliva and these are known as breaker drop frame passage and finisher drop frame passage. So, in the breaker drop frame passage that is the very first passage, the input is cut sliver, the output is drawn sliver. When you go to the next passage which is known as finisher drop frame passage, the input is drawn sliver, the output is also drawn sliver. So, the next machine both an input and output cans are similar in terms of their dimensions. 
whereas in the breaker draw frame the input cans are much larger because they are coming from the carding machines and the outbound cans are a little smaller. Now, in general cans is a very simple uh, container basically is a hollow cylindrical vessel which is closed at the base. At the base there exists a plate supported by spiral springs that could be one spring that could be three spring it may vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but point is there is a plate within the can and this plate is supported by a spiral spring. When the can is empty the spring deflection is nil and the plate stands close to the rim of the can that is how the uh, the spring stiffness is designed in such a way that when there is no pressure on the spring then the uh, can plate is right close to the uh, rim of the can. Now in these cans drop frame can hold on and around 20 to 25, 22 to 25 kilo of sliver maximum one can go up to 20 or 25. The cans have a caster at the bottom so that they can be moved easily by rolling on the floor. So, this is something which are there in all modern cans just to ship them from one place to other the casters which are there so that can they can roll on the floor and they can be easily dragged by the operators. The diameter of the spring plate is 15 to 20 mm less than the inner diameter of the can. So, plate is little less so that there is no accidental contact between the plate and the inner wall of the can. Hence, there is little gap that we maintain between the uh, plate and the inner wall of the can. In the table it is being shown that the kind diameters and kind heights combinations are given and for these combinations what could be the capacity of these cans are also listed. Obviously, when the height is more and diameter is more the volume is more and therefore, the kg of material that can be stuffed within it will also be more. So, we have cans of different combination of diameter and height and different combinations at different volume and therefore, they can accommodate different quantity of materials. So, one can go the largest can is having a diameter 1300 millimeter that means 1.3 meter and it is the height and the diameter could be 1 meter and this combination will give you a capacity which can vary between 63 to 80 kilo. So, there are different cans and we can uh, have different quantity of material that we can stuff within the cans. The new type of cans which are coming specific to some machines see most of the cans are basically circular in terms of their cross sections and if the circular cans I place them as shown in the diagram there is always a void space as shown here. This void space means basically that the space is not properly utilized. Therefore, in the some rotor spinning machine nowadays when we feed cans we have rectangular type of cans also. Rectangular type of cans this void space is very very little therefore, we can have very compact arrangement of cans in order to optimum use of the floor space. So, rectangular cans are also available. This is another no, important point that we should know that is sliver withdrawal from the can. In the diagram on the left hand side, we are showing the 
spring along with the can bottom or that is false bottom we call it or this is also known this is basically the plate which is holding the sliver on the top of it. So, here the spring is here, then the plate is here, this can plate on the top of the can plate you have column of sliver which is there. So, when the the can is full with material, the lot of suppose 80 or 18 to 20 kilo or 25 kilo material is there, the spring get compressed and this is the situation shown here in the first number 1 diagram. Okay. As the sliver is withdrawn, the pressure on the spring will progressively reduce because the weight reduction is there. The spring at the bottom will therefore extend or it will expand like in the second diagram it is happening. All right. And the can plate will therefore move up with the column of sliver on it. So, as soon as I am removing the sliver, there is a weight reduction, the pressure on the spring is going down. So, the spring is going to expand. As a result, the sliver column will be lifted up. The top layer of the sliver column therefore, moves up. The reason is so that it remains closer to the lifting rollers. This is required to avoid sliver breakage due to its own hanging weight. See from here to there, from the top layer to the lifting roll, there is a certain distance the sliver has to travel. And we have to see that the hanging weight of the sliver should not be too much, so that it get undue stretched. Therefore, the top layer from which the sliver is withdrawn continuously, this layer should be closer to the lifting roller. It is the spring which is helping us to pushing the sliver column up and up in order to make sure that the layer from which the sliver is withdrawn always remains close to the lifting roller. So, this is how it is going to act and help us in bringing down the uh, the sliver breaks. Now, for this what we require is this the if you look at the diagram in the right hand side now that the first diagram as we remove the sliver the column height that is sliver column height will go down and down. And let us say this is this particular line is representing the way the height reduces as the sliver is removed. On the right hand side there is a diagram which shows as the force on the spring reduces how the spring compression is going to be more going to change. And we see that these two must match each other. So, that is change in sliver column height and spring compression with removal of sliver weight always remains same. And therefore, the spring constant has to match the way the column height of the sliver changes with removal of sliver. If they match in that case what will happen? The column will be pushed by the right amount and the top layer will always remain almost at the same level or the same height. And the hanging length of the sliver therefore, will remain more or less same. Now, we go to the drafting unit. 
In the drafting unit, let us to start with, let us say we have a very simple drafting unit consisting of three pair of rollers, bottom rollers and top rollers. The bottom rollers are made of steel with flutes on its surface. All the bottom rollers will be having flutes on their surface. The top rollers on the contrary will have a synthetic rubber cover. So, the bottom ones are made of steel and the top ones will have a synthetic rubber as a cover. The bottom rollers are positively driven, they are connected to the motor through gears. Top rollers are driven due to frictional contact with the bottom rollers. So, top rollers do not get a drive from independent source, but they are driven because the bottom ones are running and there is a frictional contact between top and bottom and hence the drive goes from bottom roller to the fibers which are in between and from the sliver to the top rollers. And the drafting unit is placed in a low pressure chamber as already we have discussed because of the liberation of dust particles, we have to keep the area clean and hence there has to be a suction system here itself, so that the dust does not get spread out and we want to remove them as soon as they get generated. The speeds of the rollers V 2 is always greater than V 1 and V 1 is always greater than V 0. So, they are running such a way that their velocities are progressively increasing from the feed end to the delivery end. So, if we have three pair of rollers which are mostly there, we have two drafting zones. This also was mentioned earlier. We have front or main draft zone and we have back or brake draft zone. So, this is the brake drop zone and we have front drop zone, there are two drafting zones. Now, let us look at the reason behind the, uh, the floats, the roller surfaces, the why they are designed this way. The bottom rollers are all made of steel, the surface is fluted and we have three different types of flute, axial or straight flute, we have inclined or spiral flute and we can have also knurled surface. These are the three different types of flute that we can have. The flute geometry is typically shown in one case like the pitch could be 1.6 mm the land area could be 0.18 mm, the height could be 0.5 mm and the angle is around 60 degree. So, this is the typical flute geometry. Why do you need flute? The flutes ensures better grip on fiber, this point is important. If the roller surface is made very smooth, then the frictional transfer of motion from bottom to the fiber will not be very, very efficient. And therefore, we have to have a rough surface. To make the surface rough, we introduce flutes. So, actually flutes help in better gripping of fibers. Inclined flute leads to quieter running and reduces drafting irregularity. We will discuss about inclined flutes later on in more details, okay, why and how they help in reducing drafting irregularity. The inclined flutes or the helical flutes 
or you can also say the spiral fruits help in shuffling the fibers in delivered saliva and thereby make the saliva more regular. This point also will be discussed in little detail that they can help in shuffling the fibers in the delivered saliva and due to the shuffling action the saliva becomes more regular. The null surface is also used but not in, in drop frame, but mostly used in some other you know, especially on drafting units of speed frame and ring spinning machines. But they can also be used uh, here as well. In helical versus straight flute as we just discussed earlier. In the case of straight flute, let us say in this diagram a, a straight flute, the uh, black thin rectangular rectangle that you see, suppose this is representing the land of the flute, all right. So, what happens? All the fiber ends falling on the land area is gripped by the land and withdrawn together as a bunch. See here it is shown there are these are the fibers. So, the land area has certain dimensions. Any fiber end which is falling within this area of the land, they all will be gripped together and they will be pulled together in the form of a bunch. Now, suppose the previous process produces a thick region due to drafting fault, many front fiber ends will be very close to each other when there is a fault means there is a accumulation of fibers. And the accumulation of fiber basically will mean that many fibers will have their leading ends very close to each other and therefore, we will see there is a little thicker part in that region. Now, if such a bunch approaches the roller where we have only straight flute and the bunch as a whole will be gripped by the top land of the flute and will be withdrawn together and therefore, it will move in the form of a cluster without getting broken through the drafting zone. This is the difficulty with the straight flute that it cannot break the bunching effect that may occur in this saliva because of some kind of fault which could be mechanical fault with the rollers in the previous drafting zone. However, if we have helical flute and look at this now there is a helical flute in the other diagram and these are the fibers with co terminating ends that means, it is a bunch of fibers and if this bunch approaches the drafting roller, then the ends are actually arriving on the land area at different point of time and hence they will be accelerated also at different point of time. As a result, the bunch will be broken. Therefore, the helical flutes or the spiral flute will help in breaking the bunches or in breaking the clusters and therefore, it will improve the regularity of the saliva. That is the purpose of having helical fruit instead of straight fruit. With this we close today and thank you. <laughs>